All right, we got the main garden tilled today. We're gonna put a plastic silo cover over it soon so that way it'll keep the weeds from popping up and it will also help keep the ground warm so it'll help the seeds germinate faster when we plant them and it'll help warm up the plants and help them grow faster. And the silo cover is really nice because you can reuse it each year so I'll go ahead and show you that. It's gonna get delivered in a couple minutes. And then right here we couldn't get the tractor to get in between this part. I already have some fabric down here but I gotta clean it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it by hand because I don't have a little hand tiller at the moment, so I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, we're going to finally roll this big silo cover out on the, the garden. Got cloud staples to hold it down. Some people use dirt to cover it but that's never really worked out well for me. I use these. The one pain is after the season, you have to go through and pick them all up, but it honestly is not that hard. So we're gonna roll this out and it's really nice because it'll keep the weeds from popping up. It'll keep the ground nice and warm, which will help seeds germinate faster and help the plants grow faster. And since it'll be preventing the weeds from popping up, then I don't have to worry about spraying anything. And I won't be breaking my back and wasting time that I really don't have pulling weeds all summer because you don't want weeds to compete with your plants and also they just don't look good. I got on my sun shirt to protect me from the UV rays. Anytime you're outside gardening, be very cautious about the sun. And this is very heavy, so I'm going to recruit my brother to help me roll this out. And the good thing about it is we can reuse it. If you're gonna be doing this, I highly recommend you get a brother. I don't think this is gonna work. Like if I try this one fine, Christy. Yeah, it's not gonna roll. I don't recommend that you do that. Okay, let's roll it out and then it's gonna unfold. Yeah, I guess. Save your back. It's so wise. There's a pole in our way. Pull the sword from the stone. Yeah. I might need two hands for this, hold on. She's not worthy. I need my brother. Am I worthy? Yeah. Woo! Throw it like a spear. You can. Kids don't try this at home. Okay, wait. enough distractions, let's keep rolling it out. Okay, we, we went a little crooked there, but that's okay. We'll straighten it out. Now we're gonna get some sod staples to hold down some ends and we're gonna start unfolding it. This. We'll go this way. Look at that. Now can you grab it from that end and pull it that way? See this is quicker and easier than just the small rolls of landscape fabric. It's a silo cover. You can get it at most feed stores. We gotta, it's bunched up in the middle, Nate. We gotta, look, it's like a parachute bunched up at the middle, so let's go fix that. Hey, 
in years past I'd be out here by myself trying to do this, so it's really nice to have Nathan here. Okay, so the ground is very soft. So when we started to pull it to straighten it out, they came out of place. So we're gonna go recruit mom and dad now. Mom on one end, dad on the other, and then Nathan and I will pull it. And for obvious reasons, since it's gonna be covered, I recommend that you put down your fertilizer and your compost before you put the plastic down. And then when you're ready to start planting, just cut little holes where you're gonna put the plant and put them right in. Mom and dad are on their way, so then we can get this finished. If you don't have parents to stand on each end for you, just get rocks or something. Yeah, don't worry, I'll be using it, bro. Nathan ditched us to go work out, but you can do a lot of working out in the garden. You do squats, yeah, you carry heavy stuff, you lift. I definitely consider this a workout. You're out in the sunshine, up. you're getting your steps in. So, I'll show you what we're doing now. We're fortifying it with these boards. We had to, dis we had to dismantle some of the raised beds that I had, so we're using those, putting it to good use, not wasting anything. And then we're putting sod staples in the rest. There and rocks. And you can also take your shovel and scoop some of the dirt onto the size 2 to hold it down. Do you have any staples in your hand? Like They're in that white bag. So fun fact that wasn't that fun. Last summer we actually had a tornado go through here and we were just saying like how bad it would be if I was like standing on this and one came through now because when it came through last year there was like no warning like no one saw it coming it just whooshed out of nowhere and I was up here when it happened. I'll make a video about that with the footage I got from that day, but that'll come out later. But yeah, could you imagine it? Make sure that you really fortify this so if there is a windstorm or a tornado where you live, it doesn't just like pick you up and fly away. But that was like a freak thing. That doesn't normally happen here. Look at my hands. Almost done. It might seem a little bit tedious now, but in the long run this is really going to pay off because we won't be spending all of our time pulling weeds this summer, which I don't have time to do because I take care of all these plants by hand, mostly by myself. So if I don't have to worry about the weeds, it's going to save me a lot of time. I'm just putting some extra staples in the middle just to fortify it. Alright, so we're finally going to plant the cold hardy crops. We're going to plant the broccoli, the cauliflower, I have white cauliflower, I have purple that I started from seed, and I have orange. And we also have some cabbage that we're going to plant. So this stuff, obviously, since it's cold hardy, you can all plant very early spring. They're some of the first crops you can plant. They're frost tolerant to a certain degree, but if you're going to get a really heavy frost, it won't hurt to cover them up. It looks like we're in the clear right now, but you never know, so always watch the weather closely whenever you start to plant things in the ground. I'm just going to cut a small hole where each plant's going to go, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I cut the holes into the plastic. And like I said earlier, before you put the plastic down, make sure you fertilize and put the compost down for obvious reasons. I used a triple 19 fertilizer because broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage really thrive on nitrogen. Nitrogen is the first number on the fertilizer bag. Nitrogen helps it grow. And all of those macronutrients are essential to the growth of the plant. And the compost is really rich in micronutrients and organic matter that's also going to help feed the plant. And it's also going to help retain some water. So we'll go ahead and dig our hole. And you can see I've talked about this in other videos. It's very rocky here where I live. There's a weed. We don't want that anywhere. We don't want anything competing with the plants. 
And I went slightly deeper than you normally would, but that's because I'm gonna put in some more of this compost because there are so many rocks here. So I'll give it a nice soft and nutrient rich place for the roots to touch. And then you can take it out of there. And then I usually very gently brush off some of the dirt around it just so it fits in the hole that I dug easier. And then a lot of plants, if they're sitting for a while in their container can get a little bit root bound. So I've tried doing this the way I'm about to show you and I've also put them just straight into the ground without doing this. But you can very carefully, if it's root bound, break them up at the bottom a little bit. And I've had success doing it this way or just skipping that, honestly. So do what you think is going to work best for you. Loosen it up a little bit. Put it right in the hole and then put dirt on top. And then I'm going to put a little bit more of the aged compost on top. And you can see that the plant's a little bit yellow and discolored. That can be from a couple of different things. It can be from a lack of water, which in this case it probably was not because I know I was watering it every day while it was in the container. But it could also be from a lack of nutrients, which I think is the case for this one because think about it, when they're in these tiny little cups, they're gonna soak up all the nutrients that are in here very quickly and they're gonna get hungry and they're gonna start to turn yellow. So try not to have them sitting in here too long. I mean, there's no telling how long they were at the nursery or at the store before you pick them up. But once you do get them into your care and the weather allows the planting, get them in the ground quickly and make sure that they have nice, rich, fertile soil and adequate water. So it's really hard to film with one hand, obviously. So I'm gonna turn the camera off and then we'll check back, but I'm gonna do this for each one. You wanna space the broccoli and the cauliflower about 12 to 20 inches apart. That way they have room to grow because they're gonna get tall and their leaves are gonna bush out a little bit. So you wanna make sure that they have enough space to grow. The cauliflower, and obviously it's too young to show you this yet because the head hasn't formed, but when the head does start to form, especially with the white variety, make sure you go and take the leaves and tie them over the head to shield it from the sun or it will become discolored. But I can show you that when the time comes with ours. So make sure you subscribe because we'll have videos on that. And I really encourage everyone to start growing their own food or if you don't have the means or the space or the time to grow your own food, please buy from someone local in your town that is growing food for you. It's scary how many people really don't know anything about the food that we eat. We all need to eat food, need it to survive. And it's scary how little people actually know about how to grow it and where it comes from. I heard a lady at the store the other day telling her daughter that all broccoli is purple and that the stores, the grocery stores, bleach it white to make it look more appetizing, I guess, and then sell it. I cringed internally when I heard her say that. I didn't want to be one of those annoying, like, know-it-all people that was like, actually, so I just kept my mouth shut. But it, it really bothered me because that, that's not true at all. There's different varieties of cauliflower. There's orange, there's several different varieties of orange, many different varieties of white, and there's purple. They're all their own variety. No one bleaches them any color. If you take a head of cauliflower and dump it in bleach, that's not gonna be safe to eat and it's not gonna taste good, but it's sad and it's scary that some people genuinely think things like that. So I hope by showing you guys these step-by-step -step videos and you can subscribe and see the growth process and learn how to grow and take care of these plants yourself, I hope it'll really just spread the word and help more people learn about where their food comes from and how to grow it because it's a skill that everyone should at least know how to do. It doesn't mean you have to do it, but you should at least know how just in case because you never know. It's a survival skill. So my rant on that is over with for now. I'm gonna go ahead and plant all of these and then we're gonna go back and water them. As you can see, it's a nice overcast day and it is uh, I don't know, about seven o'clock at night. You wanna do this in the evening. You don't wanna put transplants in the ground in the morning, definitely not in the middle of the day, especially if it's hot and sunny because it will shock them. Do it in the evening so the sun isn't as strong and so it's nice and cool and so they have the whole night to acclimate a little bit more and then the morning and the whole day to gradually get used to being out here. And make sure you give them plenty of water, especially the first several days while they're adjusting to being in this new little environment. It just so happens that we're in a slight bit of a drought right now, which is insane because all winter long, all it did was rain and the mud was awful. And it's, it's like a little joke because now that we're getting plants in the ground around here, the rain doesn't want to come. So that's more work for me having to water them, but I mean, it is what it is. And if you have a really harsh windy day, I would recommend waiting until the wind dies down to plant because again, it can shock them and dry them out a lot faster. 
Sometimes they'll, they might look a little bit like lopsided or unhappy the first day you plant them, so don't freak out. They're just trying to adjust. Just make sure they get plenty of water and in, in a day or two, they should bounce back. But I'll show you the whole process. I'll show you how it looks when I'm done. So all three color varieties of the cauliflower have been planted. I haven't even gotten to the broccoli and the cabbage yet because I have to do this all by hand. I'm just one person. Now, a lot of larger farms, they'll actually have a transplanter machine and someone will drive the tractor, pulling this little thing behind it where people can actually sit in chairs. And as the tractor pulls them, they just put the plant right in the ground. And the little machine, like as it rolls with the tractor, it puts holes in the ground. So they just have to stick it right in. It's really nice. It really saves time for them. But since it's just me, and since this is still the very early stages of my business in a very small farm, it just wouldn't be worth such a big investment. Oh my goodness, I missed some. Okay, I fixed it. So yes, I do like my vegetables, but I don't grow this many just for myself. I grow it, one, because like I was just saying, I sell it. I have a small business that I just recently started. And two, I do like to grow a little bit of extra so that my family and I can stock up on it, enjoy it ourselves while it's fresh, and then still have a little bit extra to freeze. That doesn't always happen, but we try to do our best. It's just, I have very limited space right now since I'm just starting off. But each year it grows a little bit, which is always good. That means that something's going right. But this is a lot of work. And this will really put it into perspective for a lot of people, because if you really think about how much money and how much time and physical labor you put into growing vegetable plants, if you think about it, it really is cheap. It's a lot of hard work for very little money in the grand scheme of things, at least if you're doing it large scale. And I mean, this is not really considered large scale. It is a lot for one person, but there's farms like family farms that have multiple people and employees so they can keep up with it all. But there's farms that sometimes have acres and acres of just cauliflower. So I'm not trying to say that this is a huge operation, but what I'm doing is gonna be a slightly larger scale than your average gardener. So don't feel intimidated by this and don't think that you need to plant quite this many unless you plan on selling it or unless you really wanna stock up, which honestly is not a terrible idea with the way things are going right now. And fresh vegetables not only taste better, but they're also better for you because Think about it, you're picking them directly out of your own ground, you know how they were raised, you're eating it usually the same day, so it's very fresh. Just checking in again, almost done for tonight at least. And it's crazy because you can get so much accomplished and you can be out here for hours and then you still feel like you didn't get anything done because there's still so much more to do to get things going. Honestly, I think planting season is the most stressful time of year because it's so much work to get the ground ready, to get things planted and so much stress to make sure that the weather cooperates and you just don't know if you can trust once it finally starts getting warm, if it's gonna be okay or not to start planting. I much more enjoy harvesting the crops. But if you don't plant and do the hard work, there will be nothing to harvest. So it's just part of the deal. But I'm starting to get the cabbage in the ground. You wanna plant them about a foot and a half to two feet apart because they, they're gonna get a nice sized head. So you wanna give it room to grow. They like a lot of nitrogen. I give them a triple 19 fertilizer and lots of compost, just like I did with the cauliflower and the broccoli. And look how beautiful the sunset is. By the time I finish up for tonight, at least, it's probably gonna be dark. So I just wanted to check in and show you this beautiful view before I stop filming for the evening. And look, you can see the sunset reflecting on the plastic that I put down. Don't mind that in the middle, that's just our scarecrow. We have to dress it up, it's not ready yet. So I'm gonna finish planting, I'm gonna water these, and then we just pray that no animals come through here tonight and eat these because that would be devastating. And also you can see I left a lot of the rocks and the dirt that I dug up from planting these on the fabric and that's to help weight it down. Cause even though I fortified it with these and with some boards, it's always good to have extra protection. And then I was also thinking of right here behind the fabric where there's dirt, I might go through and plant some peas and put a little trellis up and the peas will grow up the trellis so it, it'll save me space and it won't interfere with these guys. But then peas, like all legumes, are nitrogen fixing. So they basically make their own nitrogen. So they'll be putting nitrogen into the soil through their roots, which will then leach over here and benefit these guys. So they'll be helping each other out.
Okay, so I know I said I was done for the night, but I was finishing up watering and it's dark and I really have terrible night vision so I can't see well in the dark so I don't like being up here alone. And I don't know if you can hear it out in the distance, but there's this weird thing and it keeps going like, Rawr! Anyways, I don't know if it's a fox or a coyote or a banshee or a witch. I don't know. Obviously, I don't think it's the other two, but I mean, you never know. But I think it's a fox because I know that they make really weird screaming sounds. I hope you can hear it on camera because up here it sounded really loud and creepy and bizarre. But like I was up here all alone in the dark watering and then this thing just starts screaming down there and I jumped and I started like watering really fast and I was like, I got to get out of here. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, it's probably just a fox. So I calmed myself down and then I decided to record it because it kept happening. And then even farther out in the distance, we're up kind of high so you can hear a lot of things out that way. But I heard some guy going, get out of here, get out of here. So I wonder if maybe there's a fox in his yard and he's trying to get it to leave. And then I heard a bunch of dogs far out barking. So it was interesting. But whether it was just a little harmless fox or not, I don't like being up here in the dark. So I'm going to go in. I finished watering. I'm very sore. I'm very dirty. So we're going to call it a night. And then tomorrow there's lots more to do. Okay, you probably really can't see anything at all because this... The camera's not the best and it's pretty dark, but I have everything in my little plastic wheelbarrow, so I'm gonna head back to the house. It is very creepy all alone in the dark with all these weird noises. But I feel very accomplished, so it's a good way to end the day. And there are like these two people just randomly standing at the edge of my big garden just staring. And it was weird because, like, they came out of nowhere. Like, I mean, nothing happened, so I guess it was harmless. But it's just a little unnerving at night. The things I do to grow food for people. I'm locking up the chickens, by the way, so the fox doesn't get them. Now we're going to plant the peas. There's tons of different varieties of peas. I'm going with the night peas because they're a little bit more heat tolerant and I'm a little bit late planting these. So hopefully that'll go well since I'm using a more, more heat tolerant variety. Now peas like it cool. So they're one of the first crops that you can plant. You want to plant them early spring and you can plant them again late summer for a fall crop. They will need a trellis, which I have right here. I'm not going to put this up until they sprout. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned and you'll see how they come along with that and how I put up the trellis. But this was only $5 on Amazon. You can also get tomato cages if you're just doing a small amount. They'll spiral up your tomato cage and make a cool little teepee out of peas. Or you could use some lattice. So we're going to go get these in the ground. And here's a little sneak peek for a future upcoming video. We're going to plant tomatoes and I'm going to tell you the secrets of how to get to grow really big, really juicy tomatoes and how to avoid the blossom end rot that a lot of people seem to be struggling with. But that's a video for another day. So I'm going to walk up to the field and then we will check back in. Okay, we're up in the field now. Honestly, and it, it's too late now because I'm already up here and I don't feel like walking all the way back. I should have brought a big shovel up because it's going to be kind of long, but whatever, this will work. So basically, I'm just going to make a nice little trench. You don't have to go too deep, just a couple of inches. And I'm going to make it right along down there. And I'm going to leave this part bare so that I can stake down the trellis when the time comes. And then once they sprout, I'm going to put down a garden safe pre-emergent to prevent other weeds from sprouting around it. If I were to put the pre-emergent down now, it would prevent the weeds, or not the weeds, it would prevent the peas from sprouting because the pre-emergent can't tell the difference between a vegetable seed and a weed seed. So don't put that down first and make sure what you're using is garden and food safe. so peaceful up here. Here they are. Peas are actually one of my favorite things to plant because since the seeds are so large and round and easy to hold on to, it's just, it makes it very quick and easy because I deal with so many seeds that are so tiny and so hard to see. So this just makes it so much easier, especially when it comes to spacing. So you just plop it right into the dirt, just a couple inches apart. And peas aren't too fussy. Like I mentioned earlier, they are nitrogen fixing like all legumes. So they really don't need you to put down any additional nitrogen. They really don't need a whole lot of nutrients added to the soil. Maybe a little compost and that'll be good. They don't need a ton of water either. So they're pretty low maintenance. Now, if you notice them getting wilty, make sure you definitely water them, but they'll be fine with about an inch or two a week. 
I'm not a huge fan of frozen peas or peas in a can, but there's just something so delicious about a fresh pea right out of the garden. They taste so much better. They're so sweet. So if you don't like peas, you might want to try planting them for yourself because I guarantee it'll change your opinion on them. As far as insects go, I really don't have a lot of issues with the bugs wanting to eat the pea plants, which is really nice. Now, rabbits will eat the sprouts, so that is one thing to look out for. You can put up a fence if you need to. We usually have a really bad rabbit problem around here, but when we had that bad tornado last summer, it took out a lot of trees, and then a lot of the trees ended up getting cleared out that were remaining afterwards because it was just such a mess after that storm. So now a lot of the rabbits have kind of moved out of here since their shelter is gone. Obviously the rabbits don't live in the tree, but the trees form like a little forest right behind my garden. So now a lot of their hiding spots and their shade and their cover is gone. So that's helped when it comes to the garden. You could also try putting up fake owls or fake cats, or you could use some hot pepper wax and spray it onto the plant leaves. Now that's hit or miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it works for a little bit and then eventually the rabbits or the squirrels will decide that they don't care anymore. But that is some suggestions you could at least try. So now I'm just gonna cover these up and then I'll water them in. Because it's still very dry, it figures as soon as we start getting plants in the ground, the rain wants to go away, even though it was raining so much prior to this. This variety of peas matures in about 61 days, so it's a pretty quick turnaround. Thanks for watching and stay tuned because we're going to have a lot more updates coming.